Welcome to AP Podcast 16.6. This is on free energy and reactions. Now, the last time we were together, we talked about uh, entropy in reactions. So we're going to go ahead and talk about Gibbs free energy, uh, this delta G. And notice there's the, the not sign there. It tells us that's at standard state. Now, if you look right here, and it says that free energy is a change that will occur if the reactants in their standard state turn a product in their standard state. Well, it's a measure of what we're going to look at in reactions. It's unfortunately not something you can measure it directly. We don't have a Gibbs free energy meter that you can use to detect some kind of change. But there are a number of ways that we can come up with it. If we use uh, one way is, of course, to use our good old ghost formula right there, which we've done a couple times. We've done in class probably a few times by now. Uh, another way is we could use Hess's Law. You can imagine a reaction written, you know, A plus B yields C plus D. And instead of a delta H over here, you would see a delta G standard. You might see some of those. And then a third way uh, would be to use the good old, uh, the sum of the the moles of products minus the sum of the moles of reactants, where we would look up in table A21 in our book and get those values. So we, we can do all three of those and solve the problem for how much free energy is in a reaction. Now there's a couple things on this slide. Um, uh, products, okay, reactants because, oh, it's products minus reactants because it's the state function. Again, like S and H, we're not really worried about the path. We're just worried about that initial point and that final part point. So that's not a problem. Now, the more negative G, the further to the right re the reaction will proceed to equilibrium. We haven't really talked about equilibrium yet. But let me just give you a brief idea of what's going on. Let's say we have this simple reaction like this. Okay. Now, the way we've been doing chemistry of your entire chemical career so far is we've been worried about what products are formed. Well, it turns out that there are some reactions, and we'll be spending a lot of time where the reverse reaction also occurs. All right. And so that's what this means. When you get a negative G, that tells you that the reaction is really going forward, and there will be more to come um, from there. So uh, if you look at the chart, on A21, you will notice that the standard free energy for the formation of any element is zero. And it is the same thing for the H, because an H, remember when we were doing heats of formation, if you looked up the delta H for something like aluminum, you would see there would be a zero there. So um, something to remember. But again, you're going to be looking at charts, so it's uh, probably not something that you're going to have to worry about. And then this last little line I have right here, uh, remember, spontaneity tells us nothing about rate. So, a spot, if we get a negative delta G, we can say that reaction is spontaneous. It will go. All right? But what it doesn't do is it doesn't tell us about how fast it'll go. For example, rusting, and I mentioned this before, is a spontaneous process. However, it takes a long time. So. It doesn't tell us how fast it's going. So let's do a couple problems. Um, and we're going to do them a little differently because at this point in your chem career, you've practiced all three of these techniques with either delta H or delta S. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you pause the video right now, try and find these answers, and then I will give you the answer and you can check with them. And of course, if we don't get these done right you know, in tonight when you're sitting there, We'll definitely look at these in class. So go ahead and pause the video right now, solve this problem, and see if you get what I get. All right, so look at these answers and see if this is what you got. Now, you're probably saying, man, this problem was really tedious because what I had to do to find the H value is I had to go ahead and do the products minus reactants. Um, so I found the value for sulfur trioxide. Um, I found the volt value for sulfur dioxide. And then, of course, oxygen is zero, and I calculated a negative 198 kilojoules per mole. Did the same thing with sulfur, got a, a negative 187 joules per kelvin. And then when you put those in the, uh, gosh, I hate this stuff formula, then you get a negative 142 kilojoules. Now, if you didn't get the right answer, but you got something close, I want you to focus on two things. Remember that H is typically given in kilojoules, whereas S is typically given in joules. So you've got to do some kind of converting. I converted this to kilojoules um, and to get the answer for, for G. So hopefully you did that right. Again, if not, we'll go over it in class tomorrow. So let's look at two more. Okay, pause the video here. Do number two, 
and then do number three, and uh, we'll see how you did. Or actually, I'll just I'll talk about after after you've done number two. All right, look at this answer. Is this what you got? Now this is just a Hess's law problem. You can see that we had carbon uh, solid right here, right? And um, pardon me, I should say diamond over here. So that reaction is not getting flipped. And carbon in the graphite form is on the other side. So you would have had to flip this reaction right here. And if you flip it, remember you got to change the sign. And then you just add the two quantities together and you get a negative three kilojoules per mole. Now that number isn't very big, which tells us that um, the spontaneity of diamond turning into graphite is, is a, not a very strong one, which is probably good. Otherwise, diamonds wouldn't be a girl's best friend, right? But what it does tell us that all the diamonds that we have right now are slowly turning to graphite. But we're probably talking about thousands of years, maybe hundreds of thousands of years before it happens. All right. Again, pause the video, see if you can do number three. All right, did you get that value? So again, what I did is I went to table A21 and just did uh, products minus the reactants. Okay, and so I got that value. And again, like always, if we have problems with these, you didn't get those answers, uh, you might want to check your math and then we'll look at it tomorrow. So if there are any questions, we'll see you next time. Have a great day.